CMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. All right, we are, we're starting to ask me whether the water body is approved. Um, is seeking appropriation under Article 49. Um, I'll turn it over to you to introduce yourselves, and then um, we can start. And I would suggest if you reach a point where it's a natural break, stop, we'll have some questions. And then you can move on to, to, to what else you'd like to. Okay, Whatever you like, whatever you like. I'll give it to you. Okay. All right. So why don't you introduce yourselves and then go at it? I'm David White, the Conservation Commission. And Susan Chapnick, Vice Chair of the Conservation Commission. I'm Steve Ritchie. I co chair with Brad Barber, the Spy Pond Committee. And I'm Brad Barber, the Spy Pond Committee. I'm Bill Reed. I'm representing Ellen Reed uh, from Monotony Rocks Park and Hills Park. Okay. <clears throat> the water body's budget represents only a portion of what was done to maintain healthy water bodies in the route owls. There are the Mystic Lakes, Mystic River, High Pond, Reservoir. Hills Pond, the Clinton Ponds, and also Mill Brook, Miller Brook, Reach Brook, Moonin Brook, Ryder Brook, and Hubert Meyer Brook. There's a great richness of water resources, and many organizations and people are going to take care of them. There are special thanks to the Mystic River Water Society Association, which did many things, including attempting to create the Lloyd Park. On Mill Brook, ongoing volunteer about a chestnut activities, and managing an assessment of sediments and flooding in Mill Brook with the state grant. And also, shout out to DPW for the green infrastructure projects, which is green guards and location centers in East Orleans. There's a lot of people and a lot of things that came healthy water bodies in town. Today, we're talking about the budget, budget for care of four town owned properties. <coughs> there are much used recreational purposes. Spy Town, the Reservoir, Hills Pond, and the Ponds of the Clan Park. I also note that there's a high mismatch between the fiscal year budget and the water bodies we have. The fiscal year starts in July, but the water body activities run from spring through fall, will be like in two fiscal years. That's when you need to plan ahead. And make requests in advance of the need, and also what I need to include the working balance in the fund. Much information we present tonight is also included contained in a water budget report for 2023, but I think I need copies. So, first about the Arctic Reservoir. The reservoir traveled the boundary between Arlington and Lexington, in the northwest section of Arlington. It's fed by Monroe Brook, which drinks mostly East Lexington, and also the Reach Brook, which flows from the Clinton Park. Several storm drains in Lexington and then from Arlington also discharge into the reservoir. In most years, there's good water flow year round, but stagnation and algae zones are generally not a problem. The problem with the reservoir. On invasive water testing plants. These completely cover the water surface and dense mat, making boating and fishing impossible. This can also affect water birds who gather there, as well as fish, turtles, other creatures who live in the water. This is an annual plant that grows from seeds each year. The seeds can ever remain viable for up to 10 years. Each year, the seeds from previous years root from the bottom and create new plants that rise to the surface. That produces a new crop of seeds. <laughs> the really only peaceful method of managing this plant, this vicious cycle of growth, is to harvest the plants before they set seed. This harvesting also aids water body health and even nutrients as well. 
This is done by physically removing the plants. The most effective method is a mechanical harvester, which collects the plants on the surface, water surface, along with their seeds. They are then taken to shore with proper disposal by DPW. This is supplemented by volunteer efforts, hand harvesters, plants bears a too shallow for the harvester and also is accompanied in the season. Last year, volunteers organized by the Reservoir Committee and the Mystic River Water Facility Association continued throughout the summer. Altogether, the 11 harvesting events, over 200 volunteers, and over 1,000 baskets of plants were collected by volunteers. However, for many years, we've only had sufficient funding for two weeks of mechanical harvesting. This is not enough before they clear the water surface and generally leaves the northern section of the reservoir with a heavy crop of plants and more seeds. The property managed infestation needs to clear the entire surface. Over a number of years, that will reduce the seed bank. Future growth will be reduced and more easily managed. It is important to remove as much of the seed freezing growth as possible each year. If the complete job is not done, we'll just keep on harvesting the same level of plants indefinitely. It's worth noting that Myra has been harvesting water chestnut plant in this river for years. It has now reached a point where less effort is required. I spoke to Patrick Heron, director of the Mystic River Watershed Association. He has this to say about water chestnut harvesting. Quote Perhaps typical basic plants in general, one half measures all those main value. Yes, harvesting 25 times a lot of chestnuts feels good, it loses a certain amount of nutrients, but ultimately does nothing to reduce the future population. Many population will produce enough seed to fill the area back in the following year. We can clear 100% of the plants for four years straight. We can get your cost, 10% of the original cost, and then virtually go lower and lower to grow down that seed bank. And maybe you'll we'll do plants for as many as 15 more years. Definitely reduce the effort. <laughs> so the budget request for this year, this coming fiscal year, it's a double mechanical harvesting from two weeks to four weeks. That's the increase from $27,000 to $55,000. I was asked any question at this point. Are you asking for how um, many to increase your budget over last year? Or are you still asking for the same thing? We're asking to increase it from last year. It's in the budget. We had 55000 last year. We're asking for 55000 this year. No, you got $50,000 last year. Total budget. Total, Total budget was $50,000. Okay. We're asking, each individual, we're asking for an increase of $120,000. That was in the sheet that we sent around. Okay. You have that? Yeah, I'll put it on that. So we're doing this piece by piece. We're asking for $55,000. The reservoir this year is coming to sleep. Charlie. So, <clears throat> thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so, uh, David, um, this is probably been around for decades, as I recall. Uh, why don't we buy a harvester? <laughs> we proposed that, but there are things. It's a good idea. Administrative difficulties. We, yeah, we proposed that last year and the year before. And um, DPW didn't support it. Park and Rec was concerned. Where would it be stored? Apparently, there are logistical problems. Personally, the Conservation Commission still feels it's really the best idea because it would be the least expensive over time, and it would allow us to control the plants when we need to. Yes. So we're always at the mercy of our vendors. We get our contracts together, but you know they tell us when they can do it in a window, and sometimes that's not the best window to do the work. 
Um, so if we had a, a harvest ourselves, we could do it. We also could potentially rent it out to other communities. How much do you want? Hundred thousand dollars, hundred and fifty between a hundred and a hundred and twenty-five or so. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and is an L. Johnson grant. So if you had a harvester, who would operate it? Right. So we did discuss that internally and we didn't, you know, go too far because other groups were not in concert. But it's basically like driving a little boat. I mean, it's it's not very difficult to it, it's it doesn't require like a lawnmower. It's place. like a lawnmower. You would need somebody to run it unless you hired someone to run a temporal. No. You think we didn't hire someone else? So. Right. The question is the nature of that summer help. Right. I mean, right. there are college students or teenagers or whatever. I'm not sure they should have run a harvester on their own. So. That's what you're exploring. It's a very simple machine. It right? is very simple. Yeah. But I, I hear what you're saying. So we didn't explore all the nitty gritty of it because we were told that was not good. It also is not very large. It doesn't take up a lot of space. It'll take up like one large parking lot space. Mm -hmm. Could you store it in the parking lot over the window? Would need some covering or some kind of against some, shelter, yeah. some shelters and snow. Have to have a space at the DPW. Park. I think so. That would probably. Jones. Thank you. Um, two questions. One, I, I suspect you're pretty frustrated with Lexington's inactivity. Is there any uh, discussions or negotiations with them to do their part? We have in the past approached them, and the Conservation Commission is receptive, but the, the rest of the town administration is not. I think it's worth doing that again. Yeah, There's yeah, different yeah. administrations. So our two conservation commissions are in both in agreement that this needs to be done for the whole you know, reservoir yeah. for the health of the, the aquatic environment. However, it's their you know their finances or town budget or town meeting or whatever that doesn't doesn't get it approved. So I, I don't know who would reach out, maybe town manager. It's, I think it's a yeah. good idea to try again because you know administrations change. Because it's probably what is it twenty five percent of the so it was about half. Yeah. About half. Half. Okay, so be really nice. So all of our efforts it. will be futile if the other half. No, but we do the we, we do part of, we do part part of theirs. Which is Japan, yeah. And okay, we're proposing right. with this increase to do the entire res, which, which would be 50% of Lexington. We would do it. Okay. But, it but on our on our, our dime. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, second question. There's been some what seemed like fairly informed discussion about the res becoming too popular and you know visitors disturbing natural habitat, particularly nesting sites and such. Is there any discussion about that? I know it's not exactly water, but uh, you know, the, the borders and the perimeters, particularly around the borough. Right? But it's going for My observation is most of the walkers stay in the path. People fish off the berm. I'm not sure what to do about that. I, I think there was a question about dogs on the berm. Dog walking yeah, there's the a lot of dogs on Scaring the off you know, wildlife. You're talking about the uh, berm around the... Uh, yeah, the berm around the swimming area, yeah. yeah. And, and maybe some of the other shoreline. But any, anyway, you know, are you concerned about too much wildlife disturbance there? Yes, thing and stuff? Well, I'd say it's a concern. I'm not sure how it's a large concern because there's a lot of undisturbed area adjacent to it. Reservoir on on the near Mill Brook, Catawba Reservation, and also the Ridge. So it's a every time you have more use in there, it's going to affect. Okay, thank you, Grant. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I have uh, I guess three questions, but oh. really appreciate what you're up against and the utility of it. Um, and that there's no real good solution. You say that if you bought this, you you know, uh, one other things you could uh, rent it to other towns or something like that. And you also mentioned that you had um, spoken with the Mystic River, uh, conferred with them about about this sort of thing. What other towns have this problem? Who would you rent it to? 
and have they been, you know, been in contact with them about how few of their efforts? I haven't researched that particular area. I know that Mystic River has most facilities has hired yeah. has hired commercial companies. You might rent it to them perhaps. Right. So we've not explored the rental issue very extensively. So it's the it, most common um, treatment for water chestnuts. And water chestnuts are very common in, in ponds that don't have a lot of movement, don't have a lot of water movement. Uh, I, well, I understand all about that. Yeah. It's, it's the names of these other towns. Yeah, that I, don't I, I, yeah I, I could. Okay. Yeah, we did it. All right. Um, so we don't really know if we could really rent it or, or if there's any interest in it. So, okay. Um, they have they they're they're renting and using them. I mean that's something that's easy to find out because there's only a few companies, right, that do this. But, but we don't know. We don't know, but I, I would one? tell you, you know, Belmont's yeah. doing, you know, other towns are doing. It. But I don't know. No, it's, I fine. Don't know. it's fine. It's yeah. fine. Another question would be about the payback on this. Is that you know it's an investment. You know, sure. the best way or the easiest way you might understand is that. Well, it costs us X amount of years to push this rock up a hill and then have it fall back down again. And then if we bought this harvester, how many years would we recover the futility cost that we think we're doing something but see if we're doing it? So would it be five years, would it be ten years? How long would that payback period be? When, when we think it's about else. two years ago, because we wanted to propose it and then we were told that's not gonna work. It was, I think, $110,000 for a harvester. And then we looked at hiring somebody and doing something. We thought it would be about three to four years from payback if we did the whole um, pond like we're talking about. Because if you look at the numbers, it's $26,000 for two weeks. That's part of the part of the res. And if you do double that, that's 56 or 50, what? 55. 55, sorry, 55. So 55 every year. Kind of do the math. To push just the rock a few up the years. Hill and just have it back. Yeah, well, it's, well. but but the idea is this we will. won't be pushing the rock up the hill anymore. The idea right. is if you do the whole pond for four years in a row, you can get the whole seed bank no. down to like ten percent. Oh, I understand. So I understand that's, But that's, we that's, have been pushing the rock up the hill. That's, yes, that's my point. Right. That's my point. Is this is this yeah. is an alternative to pushing the rock up the hill? Absolutely. And and it's hard to measure the payback of the gain, but you get some gain, mm -hmm. but you haven't measured. I guess is the question. So um, now the, the third thing I was asking about, this is sort of obscure, but um, I believe the, the hydrostatic pressure part is, is, is a problem because you can't drain the res without draining the swimming. Is that accurate? Because if you drain the res, the swimming pool, swimming area also drains. You get the same level. Right. And that's because it leaks out the bottom. It's permeable. In the right. future, yeah. in the first. Are there any been, I know it's sort of a bigger bigger picture, but it's also a solution to it because if you drain the whole res, you could easily get at this problem, except you'd sacrifice the swimming. So I believe that was my understanding from the last couple of years. I'm not sure drain would have solved the problem. Because well, the you, you, banks are in the sediment. So the only way to get them out, these are those really like like prickly things that look like these pods with this devil's tetrahedron. Exactly. That's a great, yeah, that's exactly what it looks like. They, they can stay in the sediment for 15 years. So really, if you wanted to get rid of them, you'd have to dredge the entire reservoir. And then you would negatively affect all the entire after. environment and ecology of the area. You know, I think that was part of the rub a couple okay. of years ago because we heard that. Yeah. So the harvester doesn't take care of that either. No, it just gets rid of the growing yes. plants so that you don't add any more seed bed. So the idea is each time you do that, then you're not adding any more, and eventually those ones in the sediment will then not be viable. That's, uh, that's the uh, idea. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. That worked in Mystic. That's what the Mystic has done. They've lowered the seed bed, reduced the effort. And I, where do they do the harvesting on the Mystic? I don't, I've I don't not know. seen it. Are you more Medford, it. Is it Medford it's on the Medford side? Where? Medford. Medford. Well, um, is there like a section of it? Because 
I mean, I see Medford all the time on the other side of the river. I don't see any harvesters there. So maybe there's a section of Medford that they do it to. I'm sure there is. Yeah. We you can ask the Mr. Or, we can ask the Mr. Group of Worship Association because they're involved. And they're, they're the and, and they don't own one, they just have better they, they access. Hire to so that's a good point. We can ask them why don't they own <laughs> they also they also have a very a extensive um, uh, volunteer polling program using um, uh, using corporations. Right. They're one of volunteer programs. Yeah. So they hand poll a lot. They hand poll a lot. Yes. Okay. So what I would what I would appreciate, I can't speak for other folks. I'm scared to speak for other folks in this committee. But but what I would uh, kind of suggest is some. Um, most people might go hire a consultant to do a study, but instead of that, yes, find some of these other towns. They don't even know the names, but what do they? How do they solve the problem? They probably don't solve it, but what do they do? And if you use the mystic um, river folks as an example, maybe we can get a little bit. And if they've been successful, they have been. Then maybe we can find out a little more detail because they still hand pull as well. See, that's they, what they, they, both. They, they, both. they hand pull and mechanical, and they, they're the ones that told us that we're wasting our time if we just do part of the I, I heard that part. Yeah, I, um, heard that. I will say, though, it's still worth doing part even if you can't do the whole thing, because it allows um, residents to, to go in there with their kayaks or their canoes and, and get around and actually use the area. Otherwise, it gets so choked out. It's fully covered in the so there's that you know issue as well. It's recreation. Well, I would appreciate that again. Yeah. So that's where the confusion is: is that well, isn't really how much you're solving it, and then these other people solved it, solved it, but they don't, they solved it without the use of one, and they still do hand pulling. So, but all right, I'll, thank you very much, and David, I want to also just commend you on your efforts on getting all the volunteers down there. I mean, you could really make it a big island event because I'm sure there's no shortage of people. You get a band down there and make a big festival and stuff and go a long way and make an event. So you've sort of done that a lot on your own. So I really think that's... Uh, Michael and Jennifer. You mentioned there was the, a right time of year to do this for the best uh, results. How many weeks are the right weeks of the year, which ties into the question of how much utility would owning, would owning the asset afford us? Usually the best time is the in the late spring in June, when the plants have reached the surface, how many four week intervals could you get into a season if we were to you know, investigate, you know, you know, letting this machine out for or for profit? The, the, growth is, the growth is sort of fastest in the spring and late spring and thickest in June. Is it feasible to think that we could make this machine available to other towns who would? Perhaps wanted at the very same time that we would want it. I mean, you could also harvest in July, but that's not quite so effective. So I, I hear what you're saying. It makes a lot of sense that could we could we do it? So we have been pushed back either to May or July it's like, it's like, years. It's like and we just did it because there there is there's this difficulty in getting vendors to do this and scheduling them even right now. So I hear what you're saying. I think that if we did. Um, rent it out, then we would have to get our priority, and then the other towns would get, you know, a week or two later than maybe they wanted, but they still get first get choice. Then, uh, but we, yeah. but as, yeah. as as Grant was was mm -hmm. was you know, imagining, mm -hmm. I think this is a very easy proposal to put, to pull the bags together. Mm -hmm. That's all. Thank you. And yeah. we actually harvest the plants until August. And the seeds start to drop. It looked beautiful. I swam a lot of the res last summer, and I was imagining a, a boat rental concession at one end, and you know. Um, oh. Well, thank you. You can watch the news. Mm -hmm. John, uh, yeah. So, as an avid kayaker, I appreciate your efforts. Um, so, a um, couple questions. Um, right now, in the last few years, are we staying the same? Are we getting slightly better? Are we getting slightly worse? Where are we sort of? We've been doing like this minimal effort for at least almost 10 years now. Mm -hmm. It stays about the same. It's about the same. Okay. 
And I remember, so last time this came up, I mean, the first thought that came to my mind is, this is, doesn't seem like the right thing to do for the finance committee, right? This feels like a capital planning type of thing. So I'm wondering what happened when you went, I mean, so you went through DPW, you asked us to put a capital plan. Um, you said they didn't, they weren't that excited about it because they weren't sure where to host this device. But I'm just wondering, do, do, I mean, do you remember hearing any conversations no. about it or anything? I'm just wondering how the conversations have gone with when, I mean, can you go to capital plan by yourself and suggest this? It feels like it's a capital planning thing. It really is. It's a, very much a capital. Most of the departments, yeah. Yeah. But it's because it's, you know, it's a big item that's going to last for a bunch of years. It's not sort of the thing that usually comes through sort of our process. No, absolutely. We're just looking to drum up some support yeah. because, frankly, if DPW doesn't want to do it, it doesn't matter for good capital plans. Yeah, no, I don't. Right. Know. So, you know, um, so we're just trying to drum up support. And now we can say, at least from what we've heard from you, that there is some support here, um, you know, for, for this approach. I mean, it seems like the... You know, it seems like that parking lot isn't being used fully in the, in the winter. And so if there was any way to store it there, like building a shed or something, you know, that feels actually better. Than, I mean, I, I mean, there is a new DPW facility, but already it's built, right? <laughs> I mean, there, there's no extra space. So I, I get the reluctance. The parking lot is used as snow pound. Snow pound. Oh, yeah, that's true. That is true. That's yeah, PPW may have a problem with that. That's, that's yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Carolyn. So, how, when we rent the machine from these companies, how many hours per day are they there and how many days are they there? It's a lot. Five, it's five days a week, mm -hmm. seven hours per day. And for how long? The two weeks. So we have it for that for full time for those two weeks. Yes. With the operator. That's our contract. That's it. That's our contract. That's a contract. But you want to double it because that only does half, less than half, about yeah, half. But about half. half. Does about half. And and there's one month that the, that it is best time to do this. It's best in like June. So if we bought one. And asked other towns to rent it, we'd be asking them to rent it in off months. No. Or we would have them rent it after we took care of the problem, right. the majority of the problem. Right. So it wouldn't actually get rented for the first three years unless there were towns that were willing to take the two weeks before and after. And they might, because right. that's because what we that's do. Exactly We've done that right. when, when we haven't gotten to the vendors fast enough and they August said, sometimes. oh, we're busy, sorry. You know, so, and we've done August. So okay. Really okay. Yeah. So yeah. we could rent to one town two weeks before and two weeks after, and then other and, and then other towns potentially after that. Yeah. Our mm -hmm. first choice, yeah. Okay. So basically you can harvest the plants until August when they start to drop the seeds. Okay, so we could rent through July and yeah. early August. Mm -hmm. So now you're talking two weeks in May, and then at four least weeks. July, at and least then July. and then four weeks. Because in July. you know, so you've six got, weeks we could rent. That climate change is getting hotter. Things are going to move back. You know, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, has anybody thought about insurance if, if we were to own it? Insurance on that and insurance on a town employee operating it. I've not gotten that. I'm sure that would be an issue. Right. And then I'm also thinking if we were to run them out, I mean, when you when you go and you hire a company, it comes with the person. Is it, is there somebody operating it? Yes. As well? So if the town were to rent it out, would other towns be expecting that we provide an employee to do this, or they're going to have to organize themselves? Like no, they have to rent their own. Yeah. Yeah, and then, I, then maybe that wouldn't work. Yeah. Right. Right. It just mm -hmm. I like the idea, but then I'm thinking in practice, I don't know that these other towns are gonna have an employee that's has whatever license, whatever insurance to go put on a boat that they've rented. No, it's a good point. 
I think, so I though, know. if you look on return on investment, even if you don't like that, right. Which is fine. still a good return on right. investment, but I, I hear what you're saying. So we didn't some... think everything through because it kind of like got stopped in the track. Okay. Yeah, I like points. to see as I good other people's questions. Yeah. I mm -hmm. take about that. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just want to be clear. So your, your two week harvesting that you do now, you remove about 50% of around there. Yeah. And if you went to four weeks, it would be almost 100%. Yeah, Close because because some are too shallow. Right. Regardless. Yeah, you can't, and then we get the rest of it with the volunteer efforts that we do, and and within four or so years, it would be reduced to full. That's what we point. expect. That's, that's the that's, that we that's what Mystic River Watershed Association is. And then when it reaches that point, how often would the harvester be? There'll still be some week, maybe like two weeks, one week. They keep still keep coming up for a lesser degree. And maybe at some point you do hand harvesting. Maybe I don't know. I mean, she might be a sold with somebody at that point. Maybe. Other questions on the rice? All right. My pond? My pond. Okay. Yeah. My pond. All right. This my pond hosts at least. Four different invasive species that we have to treat just about every year. And uh, the reason we do spy pond has a problem, at least I can identify with, is there's too much nutrients. And uh, the nutrients get there primarily down the stormwater drains that come down Leap to down Gray Street, uh, the southern edge of Mass Ave. And, um, and I was doing a head, I was trying to do a head count, a rough, rough head count. It looks like there's about 27, 3,200 houses in that watershed versus the 100 of others that are right next door. And, um, and, and David mentioned that, that the, the DPW is working on things that will really, really need to moderate um, the influx of these nutrients. But in the meantime, we have to do the treatments. Uh, so for 2024, um, I'm talking calendar 24 in our fiscal right now. We're planning two treatments. The first in mid May, in mid -May it'll be an in water treatment to address early leaf pond weed, Eurasian milfoil, juvenile pond weeds, and naiads. Now, these each of these different plants has a different or staggered growing season, and each of them at different times in the past has demonstrated an ability. Cover good parts of the pond, but we're going with the single treatment and we're staging it in mid May with the hope of having the most overlap over all the species. I think the risk is going to be the naiad will be showing up perhaps August, mid July, <coughs> August. Um, but we're hoping it doesn't hit the surface. Um, the other treatment is to address Phragmites. I think we're all familiar with the tall, wispy Phragmites plant. It was 20 years ago that the plants had occupied more than two acres of the pond and its banks. And then it was a major effort undertaken by the town and of others in 2009, 2011. And then there was a follow-up in 2013 and 2016. And we need another follow-up now. It's starting to emerge. Um, in September, we're planning to treat the stands at the Elks Lodge. And I say, these are the addresses. But most of this stuff is in the water and on the banks. It's at the Elks Lodge, it's Elizabeth Island, and it's 54 Square Pond Parkway. And these were, I call it the epicenter. These were the major concentrations back in 2010. Um, now, the two vendors we're using, we have the same problem in terms of access to vendors. Um, in our minds, DTR might have the best practice. They send divers into their different water bodies and they observe where the plants are and just where they are in their stage of growth. And when they are still, when they're there, but still small, they hit them. And so it minimizes how much decay goes into the body and how much oxygen is going to create. But it's an expensive process. So we're back, we're back going this year with the one treatment. Um, SWCA and Biomedical 
and do a survey of the pond in May before they do the first treatment, and do the treatment, and then they'll do a second survey in September um, and check both. We're, we're, we're still there. The surveys will identify the plant base, plant bits, but also we have to document the presence of Engelmann's black sedge. And Engelmann's sedge is an endangered species. And anytime we go for an NOI or a permit, we have to also demonstrate to uh, mass endangered species. NHDS group. We have to demonstrate we know where the sedge is. So um, that'll be done in the fall. The, um, the other group, the other vendor is Essex Horticultural. They're going to deal with the Phragmites. This is the group that's been um, maintaining the stormwater wetland behind Airway Station. And I know they work with some of the other members of uh, Conservation Commission. Um, so that describes calendar 2024. But 2025, We'll have to tune the program according to what we actually experience. But the plan is an early spring treatment, get the early pond weed, potential May or June treatment for the mill foil, and then a third treatment to hit the brittle naiad if required. These proactive treatments will occur when the plants are shot, without seed, without fruiting bodies, and gives us the best chance to really knock it down. That's all I have. Were you going to talk about the budget? Not me. Oh, okay. Are you going to do that, Brad, or you want me to do it? Why don't you do it? Okay. Well, so, let me say one more thing. Okay, go ahead. By part is very complicated. Page seven of the report lists all the issues with by part. It's very complicated area to manage. Okay. So as, as you've heard, um, we're changing the management for next year, for fiscal year 25, to add potentially more treatments because we're trying to be a little more proactive and targeted. This year we didn't in fiscal year um, 24 um, because we're trying to live within the budget that was approved already. Um, and uh, that's why we're asking for um, $70,000 for Spy Pond for fiscal year 25. Versus, um, what did we ask for? Twenty. Right. Right. Thirty-five. Right. It says seven to thirty-five. And that and those those increases already are basically the increases in the treatments as as, as needed. About, as needed. Um, now, you know, one of those treatments may not be needed. As he said, we don't know if this finding I is going to show up again. So we have a little bit of money in there, but if we don't need it, we won't use it. You can be prepared, whatever happens. Right. Yeah. Right. And then the Phragmites, we have not been treated. So that was not in our budget last year at all because we didn't need to. And it's been slowly creeping up again, and we want to get a handle on it before it gets really bad. And then we have to do what we did. Like twenty years ago. Yeah. Well, you, you, if we do nothing, it'll, it'll keep growing. It'll keep growing. It'll yeah. keep growing. So uh, one other, just so next year is why why we need more money this year. I mean, in the in the it's FY twenty five, is that next year in the spring we're going to be doing twice as potentially twice as many treatments, right. and um. And and we won't be doing Phragmites. Phragmites for Phragmites is one time. No, we will be. It's fiscal year. That's in tw that's right. Fiscal twenty five, but it's only this fall. Yeah, yeah, it's it's only this fall. Right. But after the next fall, we won't have to do it. Right. Okay. Because that'll 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 take care of that. And the idea is to do it. And so this is something we've been trying to do, and it's it's something that isn't really widely done. We're trying to do, and I think we brought this up before you, previous years, right? We're really trying to do proactive treatment. We now know how to do it. And it's just a matter of, of planning ahead sufficiently to make it happen. And um, we've also made, we're also getting fairly detailed records about what the growth patterns are. So instead of, as, as Steve was saying, like the DCR, they've been using divers. We can just simply do spot checks 
and say, okay, it's now growing. And, and we've been doing uh, plant and algae reports pretty regularly. And uh, we can see when the plants are growing up high enough that it's time to knock them down. So this is like when they're a foot or two high. So right now we're treating them when they're basically this high, okay? And all of that decay happens the, the, as the plants grow, the algae, algae comes up with them. They love the plant because it brings them up to the surface. Um, so that's the, that's the plan is to get them when they're low. They don't have any fruiting bodies. They're not, they haven't developing their roots like the Asian water milfoil. That's what they want to do is develop their root balls. Get them low. All right, questions about slide on, Rebecca. Thank you. Um, I had a question of if there's any not plan in the budget specifically for that algae, because I know we've had a lot of talk about the algae in slide on. Do any of these things have an algae problem? Yeah, so we do have a contingency for a treatment for algae mm -hmm. in here, but um, for slide pond and for hills, is that where we fall? Is that very expensive on the field? Um, they run about 3,000 a treatment. Um, what, what we've also done is David Morgan, who's our agent, our conservation agent, he's been working closely with Natasha Wayden of the Board of Health um, to coordinate on um, visual and, and doing um, testing of water for, for algae. Because what happens is that when somebody reports that there's algae, if the Board of Health goes out there and just visually says, yes, it's algae, you've got to close it. Whether or not you test it and prove that it's algae. really there, and sometimes it's not the bad yeah. algae. So we're trying to coordinate better the Conservation Commission and the Board of Health so that we have closures. If we need closures, they're real, and that we can open the water bodies in a timely fashion by doing follow-up testing to and, and reporting to DEP about when it when it goes away. But yes, we have contingency budget for. One treatment each for each of those four parts. And just as a follow up, when you say closure, you mean like the kids couldn't sail on it or something like that? Can't do like, anything. No, connection. totally closed. Oh, okay. Can't have can't have dogs, can't sail, can't do anything. Yeah. Um, and that was a problem because you, we couldn't have a cruise on spot. Yeah. Just yeah. in case I'm a phone. Um, and then my second question was just um, when you were referring to like monitoring it so as the plant is small, you can you said knock it down. Do you mean Physically removed from it that word, or do you mean chemical? Chemical, chemical, yeah. chemical treatment. Great. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, back to uh, the algae again. Uh, <clears throat> I believe if if uh, you see algae there, uh, not only you have to close it, but you can't treat it, right? You're not allowed to disturb it. Um, that's what we were told a couple of years ago when we didn't do anything in this pond. Um, no, that's not really true. Well, well, if you're if you go out there and you see algae. There's all different kinds of algae, okay? So, so we don't know if it's the harmful algae. We call them harmful algal blues, HABs, which is cyanobacteria. And to complicate it more, some cyanobacteria produce those toxins and some do not. So um, if, if it's there, if you see small numbers of it, you could proactively treat with a copper algicide to not, to get rid of it. Early treatment. Early treatment. And that's something that we're looking at. We're monitoring now. But if you don't, and you go out there and you see a full blown bloom, then really you just have to close the pond and if you, you know, the treatment's not gonna help you at that point, it's gone too far. You have to wait for it to die off on its own. Which is what happened last year at Hills Pond. It was closed for a significant amount of time. A lot of residents were really upset. Um, yeah. Um, so, um, can you can you provide a preventative treatment before the algae comes? And when you see little bits of it, you can. And when I, actually, also we were talking about adding an algicide to, the the to be proactive. Yes. And do, will we do that? Um, so so uh, dipod is is what we're is what we're using for curly leaf pondweed, and um, dipod it's uh, often recommended to include some algicide. And the reason is because you've got the, 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 the plants growing 
algae is, is being grown with the plants on the, on the surface of the plant. And when you knock it all down, that's a very sudden decay, like within a, within a week. And that uh, greatly increases the number of nutrients that are in the pond. And um, algae love that. Yes. And also you're, you're bringing more light into the pond. If you include an algae side with the diquat, it both makes the diquat more effective because it weakens the, the, um, the plant. Um, it also wipes out the algae that is in there. So the algae is not a problem at that point, but, but by knocking out the algae, you basically start them over again on their, you know, what happens is it's one of these things that increases quite rapidly. If you start from a low level, it takes it a while to get going. So ask your doctor if algicide plus quadrant is right for you. Grant. Thank you. I um, appreciate that we have to throw all these chemicals at it, um, and that's the most effective way. Um, and there's always a balance with everything. Do we know the downside or some of the potential impacts of these chemicals? Yeah, um, so the uh, natural heritage is concerned about us using diquat because of the potential effect. Diquat is what's called a, um, what is it? it it'll, it'll kill everything. It's, it's, it's a general, a broad base, a broad base, broad base, broad base broad spectrum. spectrum. So it doesn't target a certain type of plant. And that's a problem because you can kill everything in the, in the pond, which we have. We, we over treated it. A uh, year and a half or two years ago, I forgot now, where we had a different vendor and things were not done properly. We changed vendors. You're too much. Yeah. So you can. It's always a balance. I personally, I I cringe at using chemicals for these types of things, but you don't have much of a choice. Um, there are other methods, um, as Brad was saying, divers. There are methods about putting things on the sediment to prevent things from growing. But all these other kind of mechanical or hand pull, they're they're way too expensive. We can't do them, and they and it's hard to to get them to be um, effective for a very large area. So if you had a small, you know, pond like the size of this room, sure. But by pond, but it's, not great, gonna, yeah. it's not going to do it. All right. Um, yeah, yeah, I can also appreciate what you kill everything then. Invasive because okay. that's why they're invasive. They, so it's, again, it's a control. I know we're hoping that it, it makes a nice environment for the for the ones that are the natural ones, yeah. the natives yeah. to grow back. But it doesn't always. You're right. Sometimes it just makes a different invasive. Right. Onward. Right. Right. Who's there? Grant. Bill. Bill. Okay. Chair. Committee. Um, I guess excessive nutrients seems to be the theme, mm -hmm. and uh, Hills Pond is a unique water body because it has no outflow, it's primarily a stormwater management and rain catchment body. And as a result, the nutrients are allowed to uh, increase fairly quickly. There is a wetland, the end of Churchill, that controls that inflow, if you will, to some degree, but because there's minimal uh, activity in the pond and current in the pond, the rest of it uh, has a tendency to get to the point of eutrophication when we're not having eutrophied yet. So um, algae, blo algae blooms are an issue, uh, chemical treatments, as well as the, we have an aeration system in the pond helps control the algae bloom, as well as keeping the invasive pond weeds in check. So if you need new assistance of the water body fund is it's pretty vital to maintain the health of this particular pond due to its unique character as all intents and purposes of the seasonal water body. Thank you. And we're requesting um, for fiscal year 25, $6,000, which is just a modest increase from last year's budget. And that's for paying a vendor, water and wetland, to come out and monitor the pond monthly. But actually, no more weekly. We you know every two weeks. I forgot. I forgot the. I forgot the frequency. Frequency, frequently, so that we can monitor for the algae, um, as well as the health of the um, 
the pond itself and do aquatic treatments as necessary um, during that time. Then also making sure that the aerators are working. Um, and replacing, that replacing, and replacing, you know, tubing or whatever we need to keep them. And that's in Monotony, Monotony no, Park. Sorry. Park. Sorry. So if you sure. don't know. Oh, yeah, that. that's okay. <laughs> I don't see any hands up. I don't see any questions. So um, we'll go on to McLennan. Um, McLennan Park Detention Ponds on Reeds Brook. Um, they're on page believe, six of your report. And many of you are familiar with these ponds. Um, they were originally um, created a number of years ago when the landfill was closed there and they, they were created as a as stormwater detention ponds, but also as, as a naturalized and restored area for, for wildlife. Um, the ponds require a new survey to determine if the conditions differ from the design. Unfortunately, um, way back when DPW was supposed to to monitor it and do a survey and figure out what should be the maintenance of these ponds. And that was never done. Yeah. So we're now trying to survey them and find out, um, you know, are they designed the way they <clears throat> were supposed to be designed? Are they still functioning? Mm -hmm. Are they doing what they need to do? And this is a, a CPA application that the Department of Planning and, and Community Development submitted um, to do this survey, and if awarded, um, then the, these funds will pay for that survey in 2024. And I think you're hearing about CPA later, so I won't elaborate in, unless there are questions on that. The other thing that the Conservation Commission is directly coordinating with is, um, is making a buffer strip, is monitoring, making and monitoring a buffer strip around the oh, water body, um, a no-mo zone, um, for uh, for habitat values, and we have a modest amount of money in the budget, five thousand dollars, to support this and other efforts that may come from the study um, that the Conservation Commission could assist with. Okay, so the five thousand will be in addition to the CPA funds. Yes. Okay. Questions on the plan? Grant. Thank you, Grant. I think the study is an excellent idea because. We're trying to maintain stuff that, you know, it's, we don't have a plan for maintaining. So I think it's a great idea, even, you know, what, whatever the cost. What's the timing on the study? Uh, so the study should be um, 20, so 2024. I, they would have to finish it by June 30th of 20, 2025, right? If they get CPA funds this year? They can continue this year. They start, they start, start in the fiscal year. I always get confused with the fiscal year. So maybe so Madam this, Chair knows if they get CPA. It's starting in July, I think. It will be starting in July. July. But they can schedule a contractor. Four. And, and they have to finish it by If Yeah, I think she's right. Sometimes yeah. it goes over. Okay. I, I, when we did Cooks, we, we had to finish That's the June. fiscal year. I yeah. don't know what. Yeah. what oh, Bill, what, 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 what was going for. Oh, that's right. Okay. I can't tell you. It will start in 2024. That I do. Sure. So, so if it's approved, it would start at three point with a reasonably good chance of finishing or right work. because it's a survey, it's not doing the work from the survey. Who is doing the work from the survey? Right. I would say that was special. Right. Yeah. Other questions on the planning? Okay. Um, Mr. Jordan, if I could oh, just sorry. ask a quick question. Yeah. Um the de uh, the detention ponds at McClendon, how old are they? Uh, 20, years. 20 years, maybe. 20 years. I, I'd have to look that up. I don't remember exactly. It's when the landfill was closed there. It's more than 20 years. Not, is it more than significantly? Okay. Okay. So this is this has been a problem that's been going when on for was, a long time, was, and now it's getting to a point where somebody needs to do something about it. Yeah. So what's happened is these ponds are a nice amenity. You know, there's there's you know there's wildlife there, there's birds, there's the great blue heron hangs around and fishes. Um, people love to walk around there, um, but it's supposed to be to hold, you know, floodwaters and stormwaters. Really? We are now getting a lot more flooding. We're getting complaints from residents about more flooding. 
we're getting complaints that these ponds are silty and you know things like that. Rising. The water levels rising. So, and we did do some studies a number of years ago, if you might remember those of you that were on the FinCom maybe five years ago, we did a study, an ecological study, just to find out, are these things affecting the ecology of these ponds because they are a resource area? And the answer there was no. So we did some chemistry, we did some habitat evaluation, and things look healthy, but the stormwater piece wasn't. <coughs> wasn't studied that way. It wasn't like, is it functioning as a stormwater detention? That wasn't the question. So now we need to study that um, also because of the MS4 permits, which maybe some of you are aware of, that the town needs to comply with. They need to have a plan, a monitoring plan for these detention basins. So. And so the $5,000, it's really just more of an is it more of an ecological survey than it is to study whether or not the stormwater is running correctly? Oh, the 5,000 is not for a survey. That's, okay. the, the that's separate from the CPA. So the got CPA, it. which you'll more, hear later, more. is a lot more money, and that's for the survey. So the 5,000 is almost a contingency for us to maintain the no mow area for the habitat. And if there's some small things we could do, like signage or whatever that DPW comes up with, <laughs> that can help them or through the CPA survey that could help them. So it's more of a contingency. No, thank you. And I just wanted to make sure I understood how the funds were being spent. I thought 5,000 for a storm water uh, study it's was too a little. bit low. Yeah. I agree with you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. CPA request is 40,000. Yeah. Yeah. Other questions on the plan? Okay. So I'm gonna go on to um, the Mystic River. Um, so part of the Mystic River, as well as the Mystic Lakes are in Arlington, as we all know, and they are a, a resource of ours. I will just start this with where we're not requesting any budget for the Mystic River because we have other funding sources, but I'll just explain um, what we're doing and what the other funding sources are very briefly. So <clears throat> the Mystic River water quality is generally acceptable. Um, according to uh, DEP standards. Uh, those of you who have been on the, um, on the FinCom for a while may remember the Mystic Riverfront Restoration Project, which we got grant money from the state um, to build a uh, stormwater uh, swale and in a rest restorative area right by the river um, where we had an oil spill years ago. And that area is being maintained. We actually had severe swarms in 2023. I went down there a few times. Um, Bill Copperthorne, our, our town engineer, went down there a few times, you know, to make sure everything is, is functioning and it is, which is great. DPW has taken over maintaining that area. Maintenance is, is basically removing invasives because of the flow in the swale and the, and the infrastructure that we built, the green infrastructure to help clean the water, then that's not going to work. You know, if you have trees growing in there. So um, they've taken over that maintenance, um, which is which is very helpful. Um, so over the years, um, DPW has taken a watershed approach to the Mystic, um, <coughs> which they have to because, of course, we've got Medford, other towns along the Mystic, Winchester. And um, they've been installing infiltration trenches in East Arlington to help, that's upstream, to help um, clean the water before it gets to the Mystic River. They, and Alewife, right, and Alewife. They've included, they've uh, installed 88 infiltration trenches. These are uh, green infrastructure. And actually the town of Arlington was recognized from 2023 as a winner of of a stormwater award um, because of, of this work, which has been um, spearheaded by Wayne Schoenard, who's our town engineer. They plan to, there, there is a, a little diagram to, to show you where all the tren trenches yes. are, but they plan to add um, 30 additional ones in 2024. And these are um, to be in compliance with the MS4 general permit. And monies for these come from lots of different areas. They come from 
DEP grants, they come from um, Section 604B water quality management grant, coastal zone management grants, different areas. So that's why we're not requesting uh, money from uh, the water bodies fund to support this effort. So we will just continue to support um, DPW in these efforts, but we're not requesting budget. Charlie? So, uh, <clears throat> first thing I would like to comment is that I thought your uh, report was fantastic. Really uh, complete, well done, understandable mm -hmm. in most respects. Okay. The one thing I, I would like to get an explanation of, uh, how, do, how do the infiltration trenches work? And what specifically do they accomplish? Well, unfortunately, we don't have an engineer here, but I'll do the best. I'm a chemist, not an engineer. Um, so. Very simply, they they create a space for the water to go through soil. For the initial flush. For the initial flush of the water to go through through gravel and soil. And going through that takes particles from the initial flush. And the initial flush generally comes from um, you know, roadways. So there's a lot of tire particles that have nasty chemicals on them. It the comes organic from organic material. Right. Organic material it comes from um, lawns and things that have uh, fertilizers and nutrients, and it traps that um, in the soil. And then it, it has some kind of a, a, a function underneath to hold particles so that when the water slowly percolates and comes out to go into um, the, storm drain. the storm drains, it doesn't take the particles with them. Now, these trenches need to be cleaned Sometimes, you know, depending how their um, what what their structure is. So some trenches need to be cleaned annually. Some trenches don't. They've got trees and things in them that are supposed to uptake some of the nasty chemicals. And I don't know which which are which, but that's kind of yes, did I miss anything? Probably MS four program to reduce nutrients. Right. So um, thank you very much for that explanation. Yeah. So um, can these uh, infiltration trenches be applied uh, in other areas like to, to help protect spy pond or hill <laughs> mm -hmm. Maybe. So one of the reasons they put them, I understand they put them in East Arlington, had to do with the soil quality yes. and the and soil the, levels and the, depth, and, the and the depth. So there are some engineering concerns and hydrogeology that affect where you can put them. Rocks don't work. But yeah, 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 rocks don't work. Okay. Right. So I, I don't know. Yeah, that well, would be a question for way, engineering. Yeah, yeah, Wayne way. would love to love to pontificate that, yeah. on this, <laughs> but I, I can't help you with that. So Sorry. I have one more question, um, and that is, you're you're asking for about one hundred is it one hundred twenty thousand dollars, right? And the man, town manager's budget has fifty thousand dollars. How is, is there's, How manager's budget for well in what? The, his his uh, documents that he has posted um, it has the water bodies warrant article fifty thousand dollars the warrant article didn't have an amount in it is right. what I saw well I don't know but I didn't see his town budget so I don't know well, that's your city thousand dollars yeah he level funded he, he, he level funded, 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 funded it. right he level funded it yeah he did two twenty between this town water bodies. Is that, is that your budget? Is They're that, asking for 120. The the budget last year was 50. Well, maybe if this is in the miscellaneous warrant article part of the document that he sent out. Right. It's it's got, the manager's budget for it. Yeah. yeah. So he's got 50,000 in there for, for water bodies. I'm just asking if we if we can have a war here or what what is the I defer to Carolyn. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's next in line. We like Carolyn and then Alan Jones. Go ahead, Carolyn. So this has happened with, it appears, every single <coughs> uh, committee budget. Um, the new town manager did not realize that um, this information doesn't come to him before it comes to town meeting. And so he did this across the board. Where he just level funded stuff. We have the same issue with the with the HRC and in the conversation that we had last time he was here, he brought that up. Um, so he has not has assumed that nothing is changing in any of the committees because no one came to him. 
And so I had to explain to him that people haven't come to any of the town managers in the past around this, is my understanding. And that what you're requesting is something new. So um, that's true across the board for any of these committees or commissions. So does anybody know what, not, not just the water bodies, water, foreign article, but all these foreign articles together, how do they fit into the five-year plan? I mean, I haven't done that analysis. You'd have to, you'd have to well, look at that line in the five-year plan. Other than everything else being equal, it changes the... Okay, yeah. So, so we do have some. There's some money has to come. From there's some arbitration that has to take place here. Is really mm -hmm. over here. Right. And and that has been going on for decades. So I'm not saying it's not. I'm just trying yeah. to understand where yeah. we are. Thank you very much. Great report. Any other questions? What was the year? I don't remember. If, <laughs> if somebody asks again, then I'll. Alan John. I only want to quickly mention that our town engineer Wayne Chenard is a real specialist oh. in infiltration and stormwater control. So, if any technical questions you have, go to. Yeah. Carolyn remembered. Um, all of East Darlington is sand, is sand underneath the topsoil. It's it's sand from here to the Charles River and the basin. And so it's easy, it's an easy resource for putting in these trenches. And anything else that you need for covering tonight? Does no, anyone have any remaining questions? I have one. It's prioritization. Um, so we have at Alewife and at McLennan, we have neighbors who are suffering from flooding and sewer overflows. What do you say to the argument that we shouldn't be spending any money on hills or spy or the res, but that we should be throwing all of our money to those two problems to to help the residents of the town. I can do what you want to answer. Yeah. I think you know what is a complicated issue because most of the water comes from other tools. There's a yeah. process in place to develop a new plan for them. That's just a study I'm going now to evaluate the settlement flooding in the LY, the state money organized by the Mr. River Rose Association. It's ongoing efforts there outside of the water body street. Right. It, it, the um, combined sewer overflows that cause a lot of the um, flooding, none of them are in our own. Yeah. We don't really have direct control. So we really just every, have to input. Summer. We we have to be players in with these other communities, which we are. Yeah. I mean, and I know you're very there's involved. There's in a that. permanent development of long term control plan at the state level for right. those CSOs. And we did get money for that. Yeah, we came in with, with Mr. And, and we're supporting that and this and this Blackman are supporting that effort in the right. right about McLennan. And McLennan, um, what we're trying to do through the CPA um grant is really figure out the root cause of what why this isn't working. Because I think anything else would be a band-aid. And we feel as the water bodies group, we don't have that expertise. It's the part Department of Public Works and the engineers who need to, to, to get active on that. Frankly, we've been trying to light a fire under them for a number of years about this. And we had been unsuccessful until the new MS4 permits came out and town needs to comply with them. So now we're, we're more successful in, in that respect. Um, and I feel that instead of the water bodies group throwing money at it because we don't have the expertise in the water bodies group to do that work. It's better to go through the CPA with, with DPW because those are the engineers, um, like, I'm sorry, I don't remember your name, the gentleman down there said, Wayne Schuenard, he, not only is he an expert, he is, um, he's an expert in the state. People have used his designs in other municipalities because they're so innovative. Um, so we have to leave it where the expertise is, I, I, I think. Also mentioned that the state has given about $100,000 to study the air life flooding sedimentation issues. That's been managed by the Michigan Water Association. So there's efforts underway to try to fix the air mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you very much.
Thank you, everybody. For Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry if we're going over. No, it's our fault. I answered all our questions. Thank you. Have a good evening. You've been talking a lot. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Good to see you. It's nice to see you too. Have fun. Thank you. Hello. I'm tired. Yes, I did one. The only reason I'm not just a manager. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be in bed by now. <laughs> well, right. I have. So <coughs> if I wait a minute, the three of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the money ladies over there. This is what's going on. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, I have your presentation behind you. Behind me. Yes. Hmm. Okay. So I am going to turn this over to the chair of the CBA committee, Clarissa Rowe, and take it from here. Well, thank you very much. Um, lovely to be back here. <laughs> <laughs> she said ironically. She said ironically. <laughs> That's my bad time. So there are some of my wonderful committee members. Um, it also includes Leslie Mayer, Ann Lau, Joanne Preston, Joanne Robinson, and Brian McBride. And as you all know, I don't want to get this. You want me, oh, next slide. Next, next slide. slide. And that, then the next slide. As you all probably know, Community Preservation Act has three stools, historic preservation, open space and recreation, and community housing. And the next chart shows what we have to spend every year, 10% on each of the three. And um, our <coughs> CPAC administrative expenses can only be 5%. And basically, so we can spend 65% of what things will be more. Um, next slide, please. And so in the housing category, where we're very proud that we have had um, a very good spark for almost all of our community housing in Arlington. Um, and I mean spark because we don't have that much money, but we bring in a lot of money. And Annie will now tell us how we get the money. <laughs> I will tell you how you get the money. You did last year. You get the money. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but that's how I meant. I, I meant in terms of uh, matching funds. Oh, leverage. Leverage, yeah. Yeah. So, so leverage is what happens when you're able to put a certain amount of money into, um, say, the pot of money needed to finance building construction, and that makes it easier for, especially if it's money that doesn't have to be paid, right. it makes it easier for your property and cash flow, cash flow being that whatever... Uh, income is coming into the property matches the expenses of the mortgage, reduces your mortgage, makes it look better than the bank, attracts commercial support as well as other things on the top. So, leverage is super important. And in fact, a lot of both CPA money and CBD money uh, produces a lot of leverage, particularly in the With the area. state and federal government. And it's um, the reason we have so many good projects. This first one, is the beginning of a project like that for special needs homes that will be um, probably located where you see it on the left. And the idea is to have a small house that will be um, really for really needy um, people. And we are giving um, the Housing Authority $200,000 and they are leveraging that. And the next slide is um, Sunnyside which I'm sure you all have seen. And this is going to be a wonderful project down in East Darlington. And it's got um, a roof garden and um, it's an old industrial site that's been cleaned up. 
and we're giving, um, and this is our second contribution to the HCA for 500,000. Um, next slide. They also were very concerned about um, starting and keeping up a homeless <clears throat> um, prevention program that they've started. So we gave them 50,000, which is what they asked for. And then next slide. Oh, oh sorry, I skipped yeah. one. Yeah, I called yeah. that. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's that's the um, yeah. HCA homeless. Mm -hmm. And then the next one is um, <clears throat> the Summer, Somerville Homeless Coalition. Wonderful organization. The um, head of it actually lives in Arlington. And what this is, is a um, rental differential so that landlords always know they're being paid. And this fund, which is very low, um, pays the difference between the rate that they would pay and um, what they can afford to pay in. So is this sort of similar to what a Section 8 voucher would do or something along those lines? In other words, it supplements the rent for the tenant? Yeah, basically that's what it's doing. But it's um, they get to know the owners of the units, yep. and the owners of the units know that they will be getting their money. Yep. So it's a very successful program. They've um, worked successfully with the you know, in um, the New York Woods, where we had a lot of homeless live, and they got them out of there and got them housed. Um, and then yes, Michael. How long does sixteen thousand eight hundred dollars last? One year. So they they've been coming to us for a while, um, always for this sort of burning sums. Um, you know, it's been between sixteen and twenty six thousand a year. Um, and it's a great organization. Um, <clears throat> next slide, please. This is the Shea House, which is on Wellington Street. It's actually owned by the Salvation Army. And what we're doing to them is replacing their roof. And it's, again, it's a group home and it's a very good neighbor. Um, and it's a beautiful old ass. All right, let's stop there and ask if anyone has questions on the housing uh, projects, grants, and then we're back up. Thank you, just one. The very first uh, uh, property that you, what was the address of the address? Uh, it's right by Mount Pleasant Cemetery. Um, it's Chestnut Manor. Chestnut Manor. It's, oh, oh, it's okay. the front of Chestnut Manor. Okay. On um, Medford Street, Street, I think. Medford. It becomes Medford Street. It's still Medford. Oh, yes. Yeah. So Chestnut Manor's address is in Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry, where is it? Do um, you have an address for it? Medford Street. It's Medford 54 Street. Medford. 54 54 Medford. Medford. It's right before Medford Street, and right after it is Mount Pleasant Cemetery. I think I know which one. Okay. Right yeah. If you road. you see the brick wall for Mount Pleasant, it's right before that. All right, thank you, Rebecca. Yeah. Thank you. I had a question about that thing that's in property. So it's currently it's open that, space. Oh, okay. So yeah. this will be to fill. Uh, yeah. An entire building. And how a small many residents? Excuse me? So how many residents would be affected? I can't remember exactly. Um, five. Five and five individual units or five people in supportive housing? Sure. Five units. Five, no, five right. rooms within a house. Yeah. Right. 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 yeah. Thank you. I don't guess they're doing this. Because it needs a lot of care. Yeah. Um, so does this mean that that sidewalk will disappear, that access? to the senior housing behind it? Um, I think these are very preliminary plans. Okay. There we is can a, certainly there, ask. Okay, there is a fair amount of land behind that white house and that may be where they're putting it rather mm -hmm. than where the sidewalk is. We were just given this picture. Okay. Yeah. But <laughs> we'll, it's at the beginning and I'll okay. ask them. Yeah, they may be able to build it on the land. Yeah, um, Jack Nagel is very cooperative. And um, I think it would be able to get a question. Jennifer. Uh, so I also think the Somerville Homeless Coalition is a great organization. Um, 
but you said very quickly that the homeless population in Moogar Woods was no longer there. Is that right? Because I'm I, sorry to say that. that in Moogar Woods, that there was no longer homeless population. I remember. I would say that. Okay, because I remember in previous <laughs> years it was reaching out to people, see who was willing, and that was then only a small percentage of the people there were willing to. to I, I look whenever I drive by okay. and I see tarps. Yeah. Okay. okay. You know, it's it, yeah. Especially I, I in the winter. There. Okay. No, I have no idea. Other questions? Michael. Michael. These projects are all proposed by entities, organizations, uh, nonprofits. They all, they all submit an application to, to be considered. Yes. Has no one submitted an application for uh, uh, the Atwells? Excuse me, not Atwell. Uh, on Mass Ave, by I CBS. To CBS. Oh, <laughs> that's actually, that's a very complicated project. Yeah. Has anyone submitted You'll, an application for that? It doesn't, it's, owned by CBS. it's privately owned. Um, you'd have to ask the redevelopment board why it's falling apart. We've actually had somebody come to us to ask us to please make it a project, but I've talked to their lawyer and I can't answer. Go ahead. Back with um, the tent sunny side, the five hundred thousand uh, dollars. What was the five hundred thousand being used for? Was it planned or construction? Construction. Okay. The plans are pretty much done. Um, very good architect. <clears throat> I was just curious what the five hundred was going for. It'll be nice to finally get that garage moved in that area. Sure will. Yeah. <laughs> sure will. Yeah. Will that so it, it looks as if the first floor will be lobby and parking mm -hmm. because the front half of that building is in the floodplain. Yes. Although they don't think it's in the floodplain. Mm -hmm. yeah, it, it is if you look at the map. <laughs> <laughs> That's what everybody tells me. That's my That's not my jurisdiction. But I have been told that before. John. Yeah, um, I think you mentioned that there was our that's the second five hundred thousand dollar grant for that project. Mm -hmm. Don't you said? And I'm just curious, does Arlington retain any rights when they turn over this money, or do they, does it just go right to the ACA? You know, no, no it doesn't. Um, we do <clears throat> we do watch where how, how our money's spent. I mean, <clears throat> Christine and I have to look at absolutely every invoice. I have to sign off on every invoice. But the only um, sort of right we have for CPA is in historic preservation. Where they have to give us an um, uh, preservation easement. When you say you sign off on every invoice, I'm just curious because I would think that the HCA is kind of paying the bills and building it. So when you say invoice, is it just the five hundred thousand dollar invoice, or is it yeah. just the five hundred thousand? Yeah, yeah. Wait, no, we don't pay more there. <laughs> I understand. No, I wasn't when you said invoice. <laughs> we wouldn't have any money. Like building materials. And right. no. okay. I mean, you can look at the, the last page of this, and you'll see. I mean. We're a very, very, it's a little over $2 million that we have. Yep. So, so I mean, HCA takes control, which is fine. Yeah, yeah. Reputable yeah. organization. Yeah. I just want to clarify. Thank yeah. you. Certainly. Any? Um, well, I don't know whether this is part of what you were getting at, John, but you understand that what this is going to do is permanently affordable housing. And Through HCA. Yeah. Actually, yeah. 60%. It's all affordable. 60% yeah. of AMI? Excuse me? 60% of AMI? I think so. Yeah. So 60% of the area median income would be the 12 times income. So 60% of area median income or below is the income limit for the tenants. Yeah. So um, it's kind of a big deal. Sure. And the Housing Corporation of Arlington is, that's what they've done. And they, I, I, I would guess that they, they're actually going to own the property. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. And they have a lot of um, a lot of the good affordable new buildings are things that I always say CPA was the spark because yeah. we're the local match and they don't get state or, or federal money without a local match. So with our 500,000 that we gave last time, they got a lot of money to do the design plans and the construction. Yeah, no, it looks like a beautiful building. Yeah, I agree. All right, let's go on to historic. Yeah, uh, no space. open space. Open space. I think open space. No, this for preservation. Nope, take a minute. For digitizing. I'll go backwards. My. Okay, and then 
This is the historic preservation section. And the clerk has come to us to ask for getting the marriage records digitized and preserved. You can see from the picture that there are <laughs> very old books. And anytime they're asked for information, they have to get the old books out and copy them. And um, so we're granting her the 77,000 to start digitizing and will not pay for everything. Um, and I can't remember how, how many years it pays for. Do you remember? This is only half her ask. Yeah. I think her ask was for for a specific number of years. I yeah. don't remember. Uh, do you have a sense of this 5% of the records or 20% or 1%? She didn't say, but she did say she was getting them out of the basement. Right. Which, if anybody's been down in the basement of town hall, <laughs> it's not just the marriage records, but yeah. all that stuff. I yeah. just wonder is this no. a 50 year project? <laughs> I'll ask her next time. I think she might be back. <laughs> yeah. 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 It seems like this is maybe every year. Yeah. I mean, this so, is one of the things about CPA is it allows the many valuable pieces of paper that we have in town hall to be discussed. And the planning department has come and started doing that process um, with some of their larger old maps. So it's, it's something that we encourage. So. We're not the only municipality meeting this. Yeah. No, we're not. <laughs> we certainly are. Especially not in Massachusetts. No. no. And the um, Boston Public Library actually is putting together a fund, a sort of grant program to help people with this. And cool. yeah, so I gave that um, information to Julie to try to get more money for us. Um, okay, the next preservation project is something that we started a while ago, and that's the Winterfield Winterfield Robbins Memorial Garden restoration. As you know, that wonderful pool, reflecting pool, was redone mostly thanks to our town manager, Jim Keeney, who oversaw the work very carefully. And this is the rest of it, which is to restore the planting that um, was trampled on. Um, the garden was originally designed by the Olmsted Brothers, um, which is a famous landscape architecture firm. And this should finish off the project. So we're very excited about it. And then the last preservation project is the Foot of the Rocks Battlefield Memorial. And there is someone here who knows much more about it than I do, actually. A couple people that know much more about it than I do. But this is a very important place in Arlington. I first learned about it from Howard Winkler. And Howard used to tell me, Clarissa, you've got to do something about Foot of the Rocks. And then he moved into what he calls West Arlington, which is actually Lexington. But he thinks of himself as an Arlingtonian. And I told him that Al Tosti was now doing it for him. So um, this is a very exciting project. Because if you know the history of Arlington, the bloody battle started here and then went, went down to the Jason Russell House. And maybe we'll talk about that a little later. <laughs> But it's um, a very exciting project. Questions on historic location? Carolyn, Michael, and Charlie. The designs for this look really cool. Like uh, I um, was one of the people that voted on which designs I liked better than mm -hmm. others. So that was very Carolyn yeah. and landscape work. Yeah, it was very fun to see that and play around. Mm -hmm. Oh no, I think I like this one. No, I like this one better. <laughs> <laughs> He's a wonderful guy, Michael. Does this uh, remove some of the mature trees that are behind the Monotony Hunter or not? I, I think I recall seeing one time with, that they weren't part of the original. Oh, uh, you know, um, Brothers design. I don't think it removes them, no. Okay. Unless they were normal maybe, but I don't think so. So black walnuts. They're great trees, but I don't think the Olmsteads. Uh, you know, no, they didn't plant them. Okay, sure. uh, going back to the uh, digital digitization of those records, uh, <clears throat> this is probably not in the purview of the CPA committee, but um, <clears throat> is, 
is anybody thinking about how to uh, maintain the integrity of the digital records over time? I have in my own house, I've got, you know, different media that put records on you can't read anymore because they don't make those things. That was a big topic of discussion in the committee. <coughs> we are hoping that the people that get these grants are thinking about that and also planning for it so that the, the work, the money that we're spending is, is thought about and as part of the maintenance. Yearly maintenance. I know it's not your problem, but somebody yeah. has to worry about. It. Yeah. Other questions on historic preservation. I have a question. Where does in your grand scheme the town hall? Where is it in your, your in my heart? <laughs> <laughs> I see. There's no money for it this year. No, there was no ask this year. Um. I'm hoping there will be an ask again. As probably you know, soon the cupola is going to be gone and we will be not a, a, a distinguished a building um, as it gets taken down and, and um, it's been digitized already. That whole, you know, all the um, the ways that it's put together and it will be um, put back eventually. But there's an awful lot of work to do in town hall. And I'm hoping that um, that the town hall will come back to CPA to ask for more money. That's my hope. It's a very important project. I'll talk to you and John. I just want to mention about the uh, foot of the rocks. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's one of those things that just you know, nobody ever stopped to look at a plaque and a rock that you can hardly read. But uh, on April 19th, uh, 1775, just about almost uh, 249 years ago, uh, as the British were retreating from uh, Concord and Lincoln and Lexington, uh, 1,800 British soldiers were confronted with 1,700 militia organized from 35 companies from all over Eastern Massachusetts. Uh, and it was uh, it was a battle. You know, Lexington was a mistake. Lincoln and Concord were skirmishes. Arlington was a battle. Uh, and it started Bloody Mile all the way down through the Jason Russell House. Um, I'm hopeful that we can get this construction project going in July to finish for April 19th, uh, 2025. Uh, we're, I think we're doing okay now. We're looking for private donations. We'd like to get four twenty-five thousand dollars donations. So if anybody's looking for good tax deduction, <laughs> this is an ideal place. Al is optimistic. I'm in the construction field. If he gets it done by April next year, the year after, I will eat my hat, Al. <laughs> I'll make it. I'll make sure it's really tasty. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, it's going to be a wonderful thing for Arlington. That's the most important thing, whether it's done by the birthday date or not. Even if it has to be a 2025 November, <laughs> we'll try to get it done. And I bought two lottery tickets. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. Good luck with that. John and then Alan Dunn. Yeah, uh, thank you. I actually have two questions. So the first is, um, what is the coordination between the, the CPA and the Capital Planning Committee? Just because I would think that they have a lot of shared goals. So do they do. coordinate? They, they yes. And they do coordinate. Usually they give us all their park and recreation um, projects to fund. <laughs> um, but uh, we work cooperatively and we talk to each other. Um, both Chris Moore, and, who's now the chair, and I talk about it. Um, no, it's, it's very collaborative. We have to come and visit you, and then we have to go visit the select board. We send our information to the um, capital planning, and if need be, they call us into their um, meeting. Got it. Thanks. And then the second thing was, as Christina mentioned, you know, the town hall, like we had heard at another session that, you know, some of the CPA money 
potentially could be used <coughs> to um, fix Town Hall, which it sounds like it's in pretty rough shape. So, um, but I, I thought I heard a pretty large price tag for that, yes, did, yeah. for that repair. Mm -hmm. So I was just wondering, should maybe some of this money be put aside for that project? Yeah, um, and I think it should be in capital planning as well as, I mean, CPA money is, you know, we have $2 million. I believe capital planning has a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So that much more. Yeah. Hmm? Not that much more. Mm -hmm. no. But it seems like nobody's putting it aside for, you know, the $10 million bill for that we have. all everybody's yeah. saying, and, you know. Which all you need to do is go into the clerk's office and look up the, at their roof. Right. Go into the select board office now in the boardroom and look up at the, all the water damage. Yes, yeah, so it's And it's then the, yeah. um, the lion's room is closed because the ceiling's falling down. We have a big need. Uh, yeah, and that's what I keep hearing. But I'm just wondering, like, you know, for instance, like, you know, the Mono Monotony Rocks Park Play picnic area, that's wonderful, awesome, great. But would that be better to be put that, put aside for City Hall, or, I mean, to fix Town Hall? And, you know, obviously you need more than 400000 but the 400000 starts to add up. Yeah. So maybe, you know, next year, you you know, another million, all of a sudden. Yeah, you, you, we, have to, we have to be asked. I mean, that's yeah. one of the things we wait until we get the applications and um, we try to at least give some money to every application. So, so no one's requested to be, you know, any money. Not this year. We did we did the funding of the Kukula Big Pink and the and um, the plans and digitization of that um, work. Okay, thank you. All right, Alan Jones and then Michael and Jennifer and Charlie. I was actually thinking April 19th next year would be a really good time for groundbreaking with open shovels and all that. Um, so, um, <laughs> uh, quite, but the question about foot of rocks was there, um, is there sufficient coordination with the redesign of that intersection that's going yes. on at the same yeah. time? Um, in fact, I was the landscape architect because we were a small group in Boston. He asked me of something else and he was very excited about the traffic calming stuff that was happening at Appleton and how that was going to change the intersection because he felt there would be more room for the foot of the rocks, which is great. Is there any consideration for the space created in front of the cold pizza? There's going to be like, you know, um, maybe that's a later or something. Maybe, maybe. I mean, I don't think that at the moment. Okay. And then uh, the second question is more longer term related to that. I know there was some, I, I heard some discussion about potentially CPA committee bonding larger projects and then doing the debt service with future revenue. Yeah, well, Mr. Tosti called me about bonding this year. Oh, that's and, right. <laughs> <laughs> and I reminded him that when we adopted CPA, it was the finance committee that told us we shouldn't do bonding. <laughs> <laughs> Damn committee. <laughs> <laughs> Times change. Who was the chair of that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> He'd been there for a long time. <laughs> no, there was no serious consideration. Was it, was, it, it was me. Serious. I must have missed that meeting. <laughs> <laughs> it was brought in front of the committee. And the committee had, we've never bonded. And we thought that probably Town Hall would be a good one to bond. But basically what bonding will do with the little amount of money we have is make the pot much smaller for other teams. other projects. So, you know, buying the Mugar land, doing town hall, I think those could be bonded. Thank you. Michael. To uh, Al's question uh, about uh, coordinating with uh, road design in the same area, there, there might be a way to bring back the uh, watering trough that was uh, removed from the scene by what, what was it? An automobile. Old automobile, I think. <laughs> Not really the right way to do landscape work, but uh, it, it, it lay in pieces there for an awful long time. Uh, pieces have been collected, and they might end up at a reconfigured foot of Appleton and the street that goes up uh, beside the church. 
I forget the name of that street. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Aren't they just stacked up next to Town Hall now? Not sure. And anyway, there might be a bump out there to uh, you know force traffic to you know, poke around and make a positive stop before we're proceeding. That could be a place where where that landmark, which was a gift to the town from uh, Carol Liza and um, the Third Robins, they're all, uh, you know, uh, mm -hmm. a gift to the town that really deserves to be maintained and restored and you know put back up the way it was built. Jen. Uh, yeah, just a question. So, uh, Thunderbirds Park. I'm just. It's very small. It feels like. And I was just wondering, there. What's the perception of having people gather there, and where can they park? Mm -hmm. And you know, so if if it is to become an attraction that we really want to draw people to, how how many people um, can fit in there? Well, I don't know how many people exactly. We should show you the design. It's a wonderful design. I've been, yeah, I've been looking at the design. I, I, oh, I know the space. So, I, but but my mind is very small. But I. I don't know. Well, I mean, when it's redesigned, obviously yeah. it's going to look different. What so. we're doing is making the usable space, the plaza in front, mm -hmm. which is on Mass Avenue, much bigger, and making you know having walls and and um, an accessible path through the site and upstairs in the back. Mm -hmm. So it's a much more usable space than you could imagine now. And would there be inclusive parking? Do we know? Um, we well, you're not concerned process. about parking. We, we imagine people you know getting out to see it on foot there'll be much more space available between in, in that very acute angle as we push back away from mass ad and yeah. raise the grade of that very severe fall off behind right. so right. That there's enough room for uh, interpretation Got it. okay and there's an excellent um, woman engineer working on that Appleton Street who happens to be that friend of mine working for Masta, I believe. Charlie. Uh, this is not about Foot of the Rocks, but uh, about the historical project. Didn't, didn't the CPA committee undertake improvement of the cemetery next to the UU Church a number of years ago? Mm -hmm. Is that project now complete? Um, pretty much. I didn't hear the question. <laughs> <laughs> um, is the work in the cemetery in the old burying ground complete? Yes. Yes, that what they got the CPA grant for. Yes, and that's right. there are some other ideas. And George, can you tell them about the um, British soldiers? There are 40 British soldiers from the battle on 19th of April, 1775, who were buried in a mass grave. We have historical literature that supports that. We also have physical evidence. We did ground penetrating radar studies of the old burying ground, and you can actually see where it is disturbed soil, uh, just about where the historical records say these guys were buried. In addition, you can also see two other uh, individual graves, and they probably represent the two British soldiers that were wounded in the battle. And because no antibiotics, they inevitably died, but they died weeks later. And the town of Arlington, uh, the town of Nottomy then, took care of them until they died, and then petitioned the state le legislature for uh, funds to uh, to uh, for funds to become to compensate the town for their care, um, I've raised about a little over ten thousand uh, dollars for this memorial. The first quarter, uh, first payment went in uh, quite recently. It's going to be very much like the enslaved people's monument, but one of the innovations on it is on the reverse of the monument. There's going to be a porcelain plaque that has a QR code that will lead people to a web page at the Arlington Historical Society that I still have to talk to Alan about, uh, <laughs> where there'll be more information about who was buried there, the battle, who funded this. Um, it's a lot cheaper than $8 a letter in granite. Um, this is not a CPA project. No. This is, I mean, that's one of the things about the Jason Russell House and the Arlington Historical Society is they are very good about getting grants to complement any CPA work. And they've done a wonderful job of it. And they turn back money to the CPA. Thank you. All right, open space. Okay, open space. Um, what's that in? Oops. Um, <clears throat> this is a small grant, but it's to <clears throat> start beginning to fix up the McLennan 
detention uh, pond. And a survey means it's going to be probably bathymetric survey to find out how much um, sediment there is in the pond in order to clean it up and have it work effect effectively. Next slide is the public land management um, addendum. This is the second grant to the planning department for um, a real look at how our public lands are managed. And they had another grant, I think it was about 50 to 75,000 a couple of years ago. And they figured they couldn't really complete their work. So they've asked for a second phase of the work. And I think it's a wonderful thing because one of the hardest things for us in Arlington is having open space that we don't maintain. And um, so we, we need to get going on it. Uh, the next one, next slide. The Minuteman Bikeway redesign at Ryder Street and Edwards Arena. This actually came in as a higher um, request, but <clears throat> because it's part of the Minuteman Bikeway, it still is owned by the MBTA and any kind of work on the bikeway has to be approved by the MBTA. And so we decided to give the planning department $50,000 to look into the project to understand how expensive it is because you have to put up insurance. We actually had a CPA project up in the Heights adjacent to one of the new um, housing corporation um, projects that we funded and couldn't be built because the T turned it down. Mm -hmm. So this sounds like a great idea, but it's complicated. So we asked, we gave them 50,000 to begin to, to do some more studying of it. It's also at Ryder Street, which is you know, a public way. So it's, it's even more complicated, but I think it's a good idea um, that area could be a really nice place to sit and stop. And it's right by the arena. So I think it's a good idea, but um, not, we didn't fully fund it. <clears throat> the next one is Crosby Park. And this is, this was the controversial one of the year because um, the Park and Recreation Commission um, had an open uh, they showed a design that had, I think, um, maybe four basketball courts and a lot of pickleball. <laughs> and we got a lot of neighbors on the, on the um, <laughs> when we were reviewing it. What it really is, is just the beginning. And they need to go, Park and Recreation needs to go back and really do the beginning to have public meetings to find out what the neighbors want what the neighbors don't want. They don't want a lot of pickleball, I can tell you that. I think people have been reading about it in the globe. Um, I haven't worked, I work in a lot of communities and all I hear is about pickleball and noise. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, I know that the, the park and recreation will go and have their usual process of going to the community, coming, hiring somebody to do some designs going to the community and finding out if is is this what they want. Um, so that's the, the first step in the long-term project. Um, next slide. And the, the last one is Mononomy Rocks Park play and picnic area and $400,000. I believe there are at least two people in this room that mm -hmm. built the, the one that had to be torn down. Um, because it was as best its prime. But it's it's a wonderful area. It's a place where um, you can have a shade, shaded playground. And um, you know, my my son, who's now 37, was very upset when the spaceship was taken down because it wasn't safe. It was a metal thing that you could fall and hurt yourself. And he'd never gotten over the the um, loss of his spaceship. But, um, you know, playgrounds have to be replaced. They say 15 years, but this one was 30 years old. So um, I think this is going to be a good process. I think it's, um, you know, in a great place. And people like to go and have a picnic there and, and enjoy the woods. And um, so 
those are our projects. And Christine is here to answer any questions about, uh, once I answer questions about open space, she can answer any questions about the money. And in the interest of time, let's have questions about both. Yeah. Um, Rebecca, Al, John, and so forth. Thank you. I had a question about Crossley Park. Um, you said this is just the beginning, but just to get a sense for how large the project will eventually be, are we just looking at the hard surface parts of Crossley, or is it also the sports field and the playground and all of that? It's the playground, but it's not the sports field. Playground, not sports field. Thank you. You're welcome. Alan, John? Um, thank you. The McClendon Retention Fund survey. Uh, water bodies are just here, and they're requesting five thousand dollars to do work around that same pond. Was there any overlap there? Or, hmm. you know? <laughs> I don't know. I, I think I think, I think they were talking about signage and maintaining the no mo zone, so it's not related to the survey. Unless, okay. No, I assume you know it's David Morgan. He's very careful. Yeah. But I will ask him now. Yeah. Okay. And then a general question, and I think this probably answers it. Oh. Ponds are considered to be open space under the CPA. So going forward, if water bodies had a fairly larger project, they maybe should come to the CPA. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I can say if you let, if it's okay, if it's quick. Um, so, so we had a water body set a meeting Thursday night, and we were presented the details about that by David Morgan. So. Yes, there's there's a lot okay, of there's there. and the and the five thousand is for um, the land around it um, to keep to create prevent them from mowing and make some signage. But the court, yeah. So okay, so the Minuteman path between Ryder Street that's got to be designed. It sounds like it might be some more like more of a rest area. Is that kind of the idea? That, that's that was his idea. Um, it's a great idea because it's a you no know, place. There's a ball field there, the arena there. Yeah, there's other but it's just, you know, we got so discouraged dealing with the MBTA that we just said to him, you know, you got to do a little little groundwork first. Yeah. Um, and then I'm just kind of curious, both uh, Crosby and, you know, saying it's open space, I think of that as more black. It is, but but it's open space and recreation. Okay, but it's just that that would have just kind of yeah. I mean, the when CPA I mean, when CPA it. started, yeah. it was just open space because there was a certain senator, state mm -hmm. senator, who said, "I don't want all this money going to those yellow trucks," because <laughs> she thought it would be all be used for maintenance. But then, um, and I you know CPA was signed in two thousand and one, and then it was amended and after that sometime in that decade to make sure it was recreation and open space. Okay, no, I meant more just you had some labeled as recreation and some as open oh. space. And that was just odd to me. But oh, I see. Crosby was open space. So oh, I rocks. see. I get Monotony Rocks Park is obviously open space. Yeah. The playgrounds was something that's more like. I should have been care more careful. Um, Thank you. One, one last question that goes from last year. Um, how much money has been outweighed for Hills Hill? I know there's more to come. Up. Well, we haven't outlaid all of the money yet. I realize that, but it must have been some because it's. Do you know how much we spent on the tree survey? I don't know. It's mostly the design work. Yeah. They have to come back to us before they yeah, can. I realize that. Yeah. Um, but uh, one of the things, there's been a lot of staff turnover in, in my beloved little committee. And Christine is doing two people's job for a little bit longer. And I'm hoping eventually to have a database with all the CPA projects and a description of them all and some way for people to Google it so they know exactly what we spent. Kind of an open shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But right. I don't think that's going to happen yet. All right, thank you. I'm very grateful to Christine. <laughs> Michael. You mentioned the oversight of making sure that every invoice gets approved before it gets uh, paid. Do you go out and inspect projects? Do you, do you look and say, you know, this this pathway that was supposed to lead up to the church's, you know, community room, so yep. that it could be an you know, it could be a resource to the community? Did the, did the community room actually uh, get built? <clears throat> I have had a really good construction supervisor for a very long time. He just became town manager in August. <laughs> 
So um, we will have to make sure that that happens if he's not doing it on the slide. He loves construction, so um, we'll see. But you're right, Michael. We have to find somebody to do it. That would be my job. <laughs> <laughs> when she has some help. All right. Alan Jones. Uh, I would only mention to, to reassure you, yes, in all of the projects that the Jason Russell has, um, there's been detailed inspection of everything. And so Absolutely. reassured that, yes, mm -hmm. so wait, oh, wait, I'm not as concerned Especially about that. That's, that's projects that happen on, on the project. All right. Any more questions for Clarissa on the CPA? All right. Thank you very much um, for your question. You. Now we have Battle Road. We have Battle Road, we have tourism, and we have the 250th. So, um, <laughs> so you can, uh, we'll do the, the Battle Road Scenic Byway Committee is the three of us. That's why there was so much laughter in the. <laughs> Um, hallway during the water bodies and Angela, your tourism or yeah. so I'm on the I'm a tag and I'm 250 and he's 250 <laughs> and he's a volunteer <laughs> for 250. All right, yeah, so. let's all let's do this. I'm yeah. also a foot of the rock, yeah, and I'm putting mm -hmm. the rocks. <laughs> so we have three requests one for 5,000. The Arlington Tourism Committee is 4275, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, right. And um, the byway is 5,000. Mm -hmm. And the 250 is for 25,000 now. Correct. Yeah. All right. So um, let so to just expedite this, the tourism budget is level funded. So um, and we have we were provided with a detail of what they expect to spend the money on. So let me just ask: Does anyone have any questions about the um, tourism request in level funding? You mean a Yeah. No. That's forty two seventy five, right? All right. So. So let's look. Let's hear from the byway and then the two hundred fifty. Okay, I um, usually request three thousand. That's what I've done for the scenic byway. The scenic byway, Battle Road scenic byway, it is a project of Arlington, Lexington, Concord, and Lincoln, and Minuteman National Park, because that's where the scenic byway goes. What we have done in the past with our $3,000 is we have a, a wonderful logo of Paul Revere on the horse. We have a very good website. And the reason I put in 5,000 this year was because our website, which needs to be coordinated with the 250 website, which is on the Chamber of Commerce um, site, is lost in the town of Concord <laughs> somewhere. Um, the website goes with whoever the chair of the Battle Road Santa Byway was, and I was the chair, and the wonderful Allie Carter that was secured to Lowell um, put together um, a wonderful website, and it needs to be updated. It needs to be updated with the 250 um, information for Arlington. Um, that's what we want to do. And um, at the moment, I'm not sure where the website. So when your chair, which I was for a number of years, too many. Not enough, not <laughs> enough, exactly. Um, it then went to Concord where the chair was located and it seems to have disappeared. I think I can get it back because the, the man that um, designed it is a um, graphic designer in Arlington. But the idea was to update the website from uh, for the last three years and start putting the 250th work um, on that website, incorporate what's already in the Chamber of Commerce website, 
and just make it more um, sort of trying to tell Arlington's story. I always call us the poor sister because, you know, everybody says, oh, the battle road, that's Lexington and Concord and maybe Lincoln, but they forget about Arlington. So I'm tired of that. And we are tired of that. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is that we would take the website and honestly, I haven't had time to get a quote from Al Avery, but I will get a quote. And then um, obviously we would turn back any money that we didn't use. All right, question on City Flyway, Alan Jones. Just FYI, um, I own the domains Arlington250.org and Monotomy250.org, so I can point them wherever the committee wants them to be. Mm -hmm. Maybe he could do the website for us. <laughs> <laughs> Save this OBL in your only one. Uh, I cannot believe it is. Other questions? I registered them years ago. <laughs> Good for you. Other questions? Okay, I have a few questions. Why would we want, aren't these competing websites for the 250th? Why would they be competing? Why do we need them? I guess. I guess. Why? Why would we need different websites? And if this go, if this website attaches to the Scenic Byway Committee, which is not Arlington centered, it is partially Arlington centered, but not entirely. So, no. are other communities putting in extra money to develop? To develop yes. The, how much are they putting? I don't even want to ask about Arlington. But how much are the other communities? I I don't. Well, Lincoln won't be put again very much. Um, you know, the 25000 for the 250th, Sandy Pooler said to me, how much should I ask for next year? I said, oh, I think twenty five. And he said, well, how'd you come up with that figure? I said, this Lexington was 50. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know that it will be helpful, but I think it will be helpful. Arlington 250 is focused on that event in, in history. The uh, Scenic Byway uh, website is focused, is much more broadly focused. It's the road to revolution, not only the American revolution, but revolutions in literature, technology, and social things. Uh, it's, it's, quite, it, it's quite a bit broader in, in scope. Um, the website is available on your cell phone. Can actually look at it, and, and we encourage people who are looking at Arlington to, to take a look at that website because it points out various historic and cultural landmarks in, in the town. For example, Bill Schwann Mill wasn't part of the uh, April 19, 1775 uh, bit, but it's it on the Scenic Byway website, as is the Dallin Museum. And tell me again, who controls this website? Well, at the moment, it's been, at the moment, I don't think anybody there. It was in Concord. The person that was doing the work in Concord left. It's now being run by Lincoln. And I don't know that they've taken it over. But it was designed in Arlington. I can get it back. Um, the so the other thing that's happening is that each town on this battle road, Arlington, has our 250 committee. Lexington has a 250 committee. Concord Lincoln as well. The National Park doing its thing. I think it's very important that we have some financial resources to take this Battle Road website. Not, not to compete with these others, but to me, there's a big void for cross linkage. And, and uh, there's going to be a huge floodlight of, of publicity on this whole area starting in, I don't know, six to nine months from now. A lot of tourism coming associated with 250th anniversary of the American Revolution. To me, it's very important that all of these various town activities, including the Battle Road, are linked up and, and communicating in, in a very user-friendly way well, for the tourists that will come. So we throw in five thousand dollars this year. We get it back next. We get it back, whatever that means. Get it back. But then Lincoln gets it again the year after. Changes it. How? How do we? Why would? 
if we're throwing money into this, don't we want to have say, a bigger say in how it's controlled? Maybe maybe Lincoln or Concord three years from now changes the whole thing again. I don't know what to say. The, the chair of the Battle Road Scenic Byway has just started. And I haven't asked him about that. We didn't ask him, did we? I mean, the website is up and running. When you say we don't have it, what do you mean? That nobody knows how to update it? Correct. <laughs> Correct. All right. Any more questions on the scenic byway? Charlie. Can you uh, somehow describe the impact that the scenic byway has had on whatever, whether it's the tourism or commercial activity or do we, do we have any idea that do we have any metrics we don't have a metric i wish we did one of the things that um i actually started ATED because of my desire to get more people to come to arlington to realize that we were just as important in the a revolution as, as our rich sisters were and i think you know, we'll see and the birthday, but I think we have to be out there. You can't just say. Yeah, I'm not arguing against it. I'm just asking if we. It's a good question. It's a good question. And yes. we probably ought to put a, a uh, visit counter on the uh, website. Yeah. So we can know how many. That's people, a good idea. How many people have have uh, entered the website? And maybe in one of those counters, that you, we'll put it in front of the Jason Russell House one. Birthday weekend. Yeah. Any any other questions on the scenic byway? All right, let's talk about the two fiftieth. Um, and we've seen a budget, and um, now you've reduced budget. What can you do with the reduced budget? I just I want to point out that um, Stuart has joined us um, online. Yeah, so we. Stuart on 250, he represents ACAC on 250. We're also a discussion about coordinating with. Um, and I just want to point out Jacob Schiller is the Monotomy Minutemen's representative to 250. Um, and Nicole is on it. She's one of our new members. Okay, so for 250, so um, the 25,000 that we're asking for right now. Um, is to cover the second year of the intermunicipal agreement. So we just had a big conversation about how we need to coordinate with our battle road partner communities and elevate ourselves so that when people come, they're not just coming to Lexington and Concord, but they're coming to Arlington, Lexington and Concord, one of our big goals. And Lincoln has the, the national park um, too. Um, so we entered into an intermunicipal agreement that, and this is actually municipal. So it was signed by all four town managers approved by the select board in each of the towns and is, is with um, the town staff. Um, and that's for marketing and publicity and event coordination. And we also have a lot of cooperation and discussion about things we're going to about transportation and security issues, particularly for 2025 when we're expecting a very large number um, of people. So the commitment was $25,000 for each of the two years right now. We already did the first 25. Um, and we need the 25 for next year. So that's the 25 we're still asking for. Um, and in conversations more recently with the town manager, it just there's new information that we believe that we'll be able to make up the other money that we needed without probably coming to the town budget. So there's some discussion on the legislators do, you know, it, it looks promising that we'll get some state money, not as much as maybe we want. Um, we'll also be doing some private fundraising um, and there could be some other sources of money to like, for example, from the parking improvement district and some and some other pools of money that we could access so that we don't have to impose on the town budget for the other 25,000. Okay, any questions? Caroline. So, so far um, we've approved 25,000 for last year. We're looking for 25,000 for this year. But none of that money actually goes to activities within the town. That money is simply for the inter uh, town organization. That's the issue for the engineer to pull Yes. Yeah. I'm looking which pays for um, a consultant that's going to help us do the 
planning and security plans. And, uh, so there is a lot of work we are getting for communities are getting. Um, okay, okay, but but that's more consulting, like giving you a plan. It's not so that's a, um, it's not actually money that will go to the activities in town that will happen at that time. The planners to help us make sure that our, yeah, they're not doing. They they will have staff on site during the event. Oh, they will. Okay. Yeah, but they're not actually running. They will be beside us running the events. Right. Okay. Other questions. So have we has the town set aside any money for our own activities, for like the, the events themselves, whatever those events will be. So that would be the money that we're going to look for for other sources. So I can just tell you too. So because we're getting ready to launch publicity. So for for 2024, we were um, we were given a, a little bit of like earmark or recovery money. So we did we're funding part of the um, uh, we were able to fund part of the monument to the British regulars. So that's considered a 250 project. Um, and then we went out and um, Leader Bank um, is giving us. This, um, significant amount of money for this year's um, Patriots Day events, um, which are, are a larger than ever reenactment and a bunch of other stuff that we're gonna put out uh, at a beer hall and we're promoting the restaurants through Tavern Week. And we've got, you know, there's toys with Jason Russell House and there's Jaws and Revere and something at the Dallas Museum. So we've got a pretty good schedule that's coming out. Um, and that's considered a dress rehearsal for 2025. When we want everything to be bigger. Um, but then we also will be doing, and just to put out too, and the, the history is important and that day is important, but we selected a theme of the untold stories for this entire celebration, which is starting in 24 and will roll all the way into 26, where we want to talk about, for example, the British soldiers that are buried in our cemetery and people who lived in monotony. You know, Jason Russell had an enslaved person, and that's an important story to tell. And David Lamson led the um, the wagon capture. And there's a lot of other stories that we want to tell that are both history and contemporary. And so, you know, we'll be looking um, to you know to find work with our community partners. There's a lot of groups interested in doing these kinds of events. Um, ACAC is one of them. Um, you know, they're looking at programming and the potential for spending some of their projects on the 250 theme, um, right along with the 250 committee. So I know one of the things that we said for this night was a discussion about the coordination between all the committees. And you can see that there's lots of crossover between all of the groups. And ATED has always supported the reenactment. We did the lunch for the reenactors. So we're definitely all talking together um, and we'll be doing that outreach and community events too. Patriots Day for 2024 is just a little over three weeks away. And from what I'm seeing, there's going to be like a record number of reenactors coming here to start for this year. And um, we haven't had, had that in Arlington for a few years with the, yeah. with the pandemic and other things. So uh, yeah. it could be a really big event. And I hope, hope you all get there and see parts of it. And, uh, you know, our, our aim as this collective group is to expand the story, including putting it going all the way up to the foot of the rocks when 2025 comes around and we start looking at plans for a reenactment then. Just, just so everybody knows, it's starting at Grove Street. So they're going to simulate a portion of the running battle this year. It's going to start at Grove Street. Um, I have a flanking maneuver in front of the high school. There's the battle with the traditional battle with the Jason Russell House, and then there'll be another flanking maneuver um, and some more battle reenactment um, actually in the town hall garden one. Anything else you any of you want to add? Um, I think some people in Arlington might like to know that the security part of um, 250th is being overseen by a citizen of um, Concord whose name is Fred Ryan. <laughs> so <laughs> I think we we're in pretty good hands. <laughs> Any other questions for our guests? All right. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. I appreciate all of your work.
I hope you don't hang your butt here. Not. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Let's knock off some minutes. Okay, right. sorry, I'm going to We should. We only have one. No, I think we have two, but we have two or okay. bit. So once yeah. Okay. So we have, we're looking at the, the minutes of March eleventh first. And I had a question on item seven. There's a question about the balance and perpetual care. Has that been resolved? <laughs> oh yes, I have a question. So I have um, I had that the balance and perpetual care was eight million six seventy three eight ninety two. But in the recording, it I think Jennifer said seven ninety two. So I wanted to just check that. I know. But this is my book No, I just want to get back to the Okay. Why don't we say approximately eight, six, seven, three, eight, nine, two? Okay. Mm -hmm. It would change by now, anyway. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, okay. I've got the numbers. Um, perpetual care. Eight million six hundred sixty-three thousand seven hundred ninety-two. Seven hundred. Okay. Do you, cool. need lots, do you need lots and graves too? Is it one zero four five three four seven? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, um, perpetual, perpetual care is eight six seven three seven nine. Other corrections, El Paso. This is just on the eleventh. On the eleventh. Yeah. I mean other. Changes, corrections to the minutes of March 11th. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Second. Second. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Unanimous. Okay. The next is 3 13, March 13. I'll pass if you have correction on March 13th. 13th. Yeah, um, on the appropriation transportation infrastructure. Uh, which um, number is that? Uh, oh, Article 42? Uh, correct. Okay. I, if, if I remember from reading the, from your copy of the minutes, this money was to be spent entirely on blue bikes, which I don't is, think is what the manager said. I think he said, that money will be spent on blue bikes and other road infrastructure. I think he said blue bike. The whole thing on blue bikes? Yeah, yeah actually, yeah. Can we revote that? <laughs> <laughs> that's why we were, that's why someone asked, did we um, raise, or how much money are we making? Are we, are we at least breaking I, even on that? I, I actually have notes saying it's not really blue bikes. My fiscal notes say, it's on complete streets, sidewalks, other safety improvements, and the operation of the bike park. That's what I have to know. That's, what, you're not saying that's you what my my scratchy notes that aren't, you know. I thought <laughs> you said that that's what the transportation infrastructure fund could be spent on. Should be spent. But that he was spending it on blue bikes. Yeah, I don't remember those. Sure. So they will be. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely going to get better doing it. <laughs> <laughs> 
I can be on the video. Thank you, Seth. What, what, what the minutes say is recommendation from the town managers to use these funds to support the food bike network. I don't think that's incorrect. The question is whether whether it's entirely yeah, whether it's yeah, entirely but then there's other things. What would people like to do? Is there a or are there any other corrections to the minutes? Uh, Rebecca, I had a question on um, number ten, which refers to Article Fifty Five for the library construction. Um, the first sentence says the <laughs> town manager's office plans to reduce this article appropriation. Is that correct? I thought that oh, he said he was just getting the money from these other places. Okay. Well, it's but they're not requesting the whole one hundred and fifty thousand, though. Or no, no, that's right. Yeah, okay. Primarily, that he didn't account for the entire one hundred fifty thousand, but he was planning to exactly. My, my <laughs> and did entire account for it. Yes, that's right. Yes, that, that's yeah, what I recall. He's he done it to one hundred thousand, and he's fifty for sure. He's sure, but not that. that would but be. I don't think he recommended. We didn't take a vote on it yet, but I think I think what he said was that he plans to request re to request no action on fifty seven. Yeah, yeah, that was one yeah. thing he did. Yeah, okay, so that to to reallocate the money for the library, good. that money for the library. And you mentioned the earmark was a fine. Okay, so if I get rid of reduce this article appropriation, yeah, and then by recommending, so town manager office plans to request no action on Article Fifty Seven, then I'd love it large to reallocate. Yeah. Okay. Any other corrections to the minutes of the third thing? All right, so the only issue is the language regarding the um, Is Do people feel it's accurate as written? Well, I think I heard the, the possibility of a range of things to include blue bikes as, as one of them. Yeah. That's what I heard, but that's, you know, that's what I may know, but I don't know. Is, yeah. is I it, wouldn't rely on my hearing these days. Is there a motion to approve? We have Is there a motion to approve this, or do people want to table this for one now? Move to table. Second. I could just remove this part about the blue bike network. Let's table this and bring it up on Wednesday, among the other things we have to table that one. All right, on Wednesday, we're going to have insurance in water and sewer, along with articles. 43, 44, I think. Um, then we will deal with, we still have Human Rights Commission, um, disabilities, and everything we heard tonight. And then we have a couple of more articles we have to talk about. Uh, this is going to be a very busy night, Wednesday night. Um, we have seven minutes left. I will entertain a motion to approve at least the um, on uh, tourism request, which is level funding. So second. So second. All right. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. That is unanimous. Um, <laughs> how do people feel about taking a vote on the CPA? Um, the we board. don't, we don't. To be clear, we don't approve or not. It's okay. just we endorse it. We just yeah. endorse. Yeah. So I move that we endorse the CPA budget as presented. Second. Second. All right. 
questions, John? Yeah, I think I'm going to vote against that just because I think between the um, $16 million in the capital planning budget and the two something million dollars, two million dollars in this budget, I think something should be put aside for town hall. If that's falling apart, I just think that those that would that priority would come for some of the items I see here. Sophie, I 100% agree with you, but what they can't do it if the town manager doesn't ask for it. So then that someone should reach out to the town. I'll reach out to the town manager tomorrow and say, Should you ask for it? I just I don't think that's a good reason to spend two million dollars. Just you know. If the town hall is falling apart, and I asked about it with the capital planning, and they said everything in there was urgent. Okay, everything in there is urgent. I guess we have to spend that sixteen million dollars. I don't think everything here is urgent, so I just I'm not going to agree that this stuff's all urgent. Yeah. On, on the capital plan, bulk of that is bonded. So six point five million is bonded. Four point nine million is a current spend, and four point six million is spent primarily by the water. Yeah, so, so we don't have access to the water and sewer. So it's the 4.9 million. And the bond million. that would have to come from a project request. Yeah. And do town hall right really would exceed the capacity of the. That's what we'll do. I don't buy that that it's too big of a project that we can't put money aside for it. The, you if, can't, you just well, took, you can't if you put, just took the Monotomy Rocks Park, you can't put the bond money okay. aside. You can't no. just bank it. If you put the 400000 for Monotomy, Monotomy Rocks Park aside, that's potentially five percent of the town hall. No, you find another four hundred thousand. It's ten percent. You find something in the capital budget. You're up to twenty percent. You do the same thing. Wait, 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 wait. One at a time. I got the point. I'm so I just feel like you can't. Wait, have a wait, wait, wait. That's wait, too wait. big to spend. All right, you, you two are arguing against yeah. each other. One at a time, Daryl. So again, like I said the other night, those projects are all projects that the four point nine million that, that people have prioritized and needed to be funded. So. That's, that's that's what, you know, what, what you're saying. What you're saying is fine. That people are willing to prioritize that way. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. Sophie, Charlie, and I think the frustration that I hear and that I feel, I just don't know what to do with this. How do we, as a finance committee, let the town, you know, not have brought up the state of town hall before this year to let it get to that point, and and how do but how do we get the town manager to make a request? He didn't this year. I don't think we can force him to do it. But oh my gosh, how didn't he do it? And how wasn't it done in the past 10 years, given this data? So what can we do? And I think this vote, I think the proposal to vote against maybe is a way of just showing discontent, not that it's going to solve the problem or that the money, it's just a way to show discontent of the past maybe 10, 20 years of I don't know what should have been done. I just point out that we had a new town manager too who didn't control last year's right. budget Request, or but long range plan yeah. or anything like that. But as a finance committee, what should we be doing? Charlie and Annie? So, um, John, in response to your comments, um, <clears throat> and also just sort of um, describe the environment that uh, Daryl's working in. <clears throat> There's really two ways to finance capital projects of us that, that, that have done within the limits of Proposition 2 and a half, which is where the capital plan and capital budget is. The first way the state sets aside or has a, a legislative mechanism called stabilization funds, where you can put money away, you know, for a new fire trucks or building or something like that, and it takes a two-thirds vote of town meeting to get the money out of the stabilization fund. And many towns and cities, I don't want to say cities, many, many towns use this method for capital spending. And um, most of the towns that do this are small towns, you know, maybe with a budget of $20,000 a year or something like that. The other way is to, a way, of, a way practically of setting aside money is to bond. Well, you didn't, you didn't, when you bought your house, I assume you bought a house, but you didn't put $50,000 away every year until you had the $800,000 to buy the house. You went out and you got a down payment and then you got a mortgage. That's what the capital planning process is. So, so that, I don't know what, what is $9 million is 
uh, debt service, is that what it is? Or so, right. something like that. That's paying for, for prior to prioritized projects that have been vetted through a multi-year process on the capital planning committee. And if the town manager didn't come in four years ago to ask for the um, cupola to be fixed or whatever it is, it's not going to be in the capital budget. You're not going to solve it by putting money aside in a, in a, in a little uh, piggy bank. I'm, I'm not trying to be facetious. I'm yeah, just no, saying it's, it's not important. the way the process works. And the reason why the town chooses to bond these projects and chooses to go this method is because municipalities pay, relatively speaking, a low interest rate. And it's much better to go this way to fund these projects than to put the money aside and then hope that we get you know, a higher interest rate in the bank that would eventually allow these funds to grow. So this is this is a process that, that's followed. And and you know, many times I disagree, especially now I disagree with what the Capital Planning Committee does. They didn't disagree for it. <laughs> 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 they go through this process to figure out what is appropriate to do. So you can't just say, yeah, I agree with everything you said, but all right, wait, 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 wait. I'm We're sorry. not going to argue this back and forth. We have other people who want to make That's points. Fair. It's now 10.01. If someone invokes the Mary Ronan rule, I will end. We can pick this up. All right. Is there a second to? Well, I second uh, the Jaron Ronan rule, and I think I can do that because I was the next person who was going to say something. All right. So, so all in favor of adjourning and taking this up on Wednesday, say aye. 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 We're adjourned. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com/slash ACMI to learn how you can help. Mm -hmm.